That should be good, Dad. The rescue rig is now officially the rescue rig. Walk down to get to my truck. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you four words that inspire butt clenching throughout Colorado. Red Cone and Radical Hill, that's right. These are two of the more butt clenchy trails that you can run here in Colorado. Why? Well, Red Cone has a 30% grade that goes straight down, and Radical Hill is a shelf road where people sometimes actually can die. And me and Tommy, who's behind the camera, are about to run it with the Colorado, as you can tell, Land Rover Club. We've got um, a couple of discos, we've got a Defender, of course, and We've got an explorer. Go figure. I run this one every year. I've done it for, for at least 11 or 12 years now. Okay. Every year, so I'm very familiar with it. Of course, trails change over time. Um, this is Red Cone, um, and we'll make the descent down to uh, Webster Pass, and from there we're going to head down the north side. Uh, each year it seems to get a little more washed out, a little more um, sketchy, but uh, it shouldn't be too bad. It should be uh, all the vehicles we have today won't have an issue with it. I should that we put it that way. No? Difficulty rating 7. Red Cone, how about Radical Hill? What's the difficulty rating uh, on that? It's a seven as well. It's I a seven, know. yeah. Yep. Scenic so, rating is a 10. Scenic rating, there and that's what, that's what we're all about here. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at these trees. Yeah, it's a great time it's, of year it's, here. I know, it's like the trail's like lit up in this beautiful gold light that's being reflected off of the turning aspens. I mean, if you're a Coloradoan, this is probably the most beautiful time of the year for, I think, any of us. We have a unique and diverse set of off-road vehicles with us today. At the least capable end of the spectrum is Chase in his 1998 Ford Explorer. With a 5-speed manual and open diffs front and rear, this rig is going to struggle today out here on the trail. Next up is our TFL Rescue Rig. This 2004 Discovery is lifted with larger than stock off-road tires, but still has open differentials front and back. Relying on traction control and a center diff lock, this Land Rover will definitely be pushed to its limits on Red Cone Trail. This 94 Defender has a 2 inch lift and a rear air locker. Really, if a locked Defender 90 can't get there, then there is probably not meant to be reached. Finally, the most capable vehicle in our convoy is this Discovery 1. Riding on locked front and rear solid axles and protected underneath in every possible area, this rig is an absolute monster off road. I figure this year, in the last month now, we've done. Uh... Imogene, Black Bear, yep. Rubicon Trail, yep. Ophir, yep. Um, the other one here I just did on my motorcycle, Webster. So uh, I figure, let's go for it, huh? Yeah, I think we're going to be completely fine. Yeah, we, we got the right rig. We just uh, need to take it slow and easy and follow, finally, Land Rover's very own saying, right? slow as possible as fast as necessary yeah and I'm gonna go with as slow as possible <laughs> for much of this well I think we're with an experienced trail guy here Jimmy's been doing this for a long time and that's what gives me a lot of comfort I think when you do this and here's the uh, why Webster Pass Red Cone I think when you do this it's great to do it with somebody who's done it before who has experience Feel that traction control working? I did, it really worked well. And we haven't even locked the center diff yet. No, we haven't actually. Which it might not be a bad idea, huh? Okay. Let's lock it. There we go. Works like a charm. What makes this Land Rover so good off road, right, is the fact that we have uh, about a three inch lift. So we have larger dirt track tires than we would have had from the factory. Um, we also have solid axles front and rear, nothing too crazy there. 
Um, and we're aired down. Okay, Chase, what are these little guys? Uh, these are tire deflators yep. uh, from Boulder Tools. Got them on Amazon, they were like 20 bucks. Um, you just uh, adjust the lock ring wherever you want your PSI set and then slide them on or screw them onto each tire and come back in about 45 seconds and they just shut right off. So you were saying you can adjust the uh, the cutoff though, right? Yeah, you adjust it here. So if you want 40 PSI, you'll turn it way up. Or if you want five PSI, you could open it up completely. So. Wow. Yeah, one of these days I need to just like go in my garage and then set, set all of them. <laughs> Wow, Dad, that's such a big improvement. Yeah, I love that. Did you see the little box that came in? Throw in the box. So they're actually, look, it's Boulder Tools. Oh, no way. Pro Tire Deflator Kit. How much are they, like 15, 15 20 bucks? 15, 20 bucks comes with On little, Amazon, little, huh? Carrying case. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. I picked up the little uh, pump from there, too. It's like 35 bucks, and you just set the PSI you want, and it takes like a minute and a half, two minutes per week. How much is this bad boy? Like 35 bucks from Amazon. Same thing, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's their it's their choice one. So even if it gets messed up, they'll you know you just send it in and they'll replace it. Well, we've got uh, Land Rover's ABS slash hill descent slash, slash traction control, control system. system, which also I think helps a lot. And it's actually still working. So. Yeah, yeah. Good. Got a little bit of uh, a little bit of a rocky section here. A little bit of a rocky section here. They'll test this vehicle's uh, traction and ground clearance. The trail starts out pretty calm with just a few larger rocks here and there, which are no problem at all for this 1994 Land Rover Defender. Well, man, talk, talk to us about your Defender here. So, so how long have you had it? Uh, uh, about six years now. Okay. Um, it's been great, you know, a couple problems here and there. Uh, I got a two inch lift on it, uh, air locker on the rear. Um, other than that, not much else. The thing's been just fantastic. It's fun to drive around. What year is it? It's a 94. 94. Yeah, I got it with uh, about 85,000 miles on it. It's about 100,000 now, which is still pretty low for a Defender. Yeah. But yeah, the thing's just fun to drive. Yeah. That's awesome. So so what drew you to Defender? Why, uh, oh, it's, why it's, this truck? I mean, when I was... I came from the East Coast. Okay. And in my 20s, early 20s, you know, they were all... Back then, you know, these things were on the street brand new and everything. And um, I, I thought they were the most awesome vehicle ever. And so finally I came out to Colorado. This one went up for sale. I love the red. Yep. And and the rest is history. Nice, so. nice. I love your, uh, your your little covers here. Those are cool. Yeah, these things are great. And then you can stand up there and, you know, do things on the roof or whatever, or the hood and all that kind of stuff. You don't dent anything. So. I see um, that radio boot. It's so funny. Wow, yeah, yeah, I know. That. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's old school, yeah. But the seats, I've got covers on now, but okay. the seats are the best thing because they are heated and I've got um, folding ones in the back and those are heated as well. Wow. And um, that those, yeah, they're just a few years old, so they're incredibly comfortable, uh, breathe really, really well, that kind of thing, but they keep you warm since the heat is lacking in this thing. Do you have air conditioning? Uh, yeah, I do have you air do conditioning. You have air conditioning, yeah. cool. It's, um, and it's nice, actually. I know, I got motorcycles. Luckily, they're motorcycles. Uh, ATVs are problem. doing on that side? Uh, let me look. Hold on. Let me see here. Okay, you're good. You're good. You're good. There you go. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. it. You got it. <laughs> got one more. Thanks. Alright. How am I doing? You're good. You got plenty of room here. Yeah, this truck is remarkably comfortable. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it's um, it's funny, you think of solid axle vehicles and you think of like old willies yep. that have, um, you know, these horrible ride qualities and you see these videos of them bouncing up and down these trails. Or even new Wranglers are, are known for being notoriously uncomfortable, partly to the solid axles. But these old Land Rovers, they, they're really softly sprung and they've got a lot of um, wheelbase. The other great thing about this guy is it came pre-dented and pre-scratched, which makes it ideal for off-roading. What am I doing with that rock over here? You don't really worry about hitting it. You're good. You got plenty of room here, plenty of room here. Go right, right, right. You got room, you're not gonna hit, don't worry. You got six inches. Okay, you're good. Well, I'm worried about this rock over here. Oh, no. You won't hit the back rock, you're, you're clear of the back. But the truck's doing really well. Well, I think it's, you know, it's easy to discount traction control. Yeah. But it really is very effective in these old, um, old trucks. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. 
lost something. We lost a piece. We lost a piece of trim. <laughs> we lost this piece of trim and fell off. This is the gatekeeper. You got it, Chase. Keep it coming. Nice work, dude. You got it. The original line and the original trail was all on the left, and you had to go over the two rocks, the big rocks, and you really struggled for some different vehicles. So people started widening that section by driving to the right. So yep. they're putting the driver's side over the big rock and putting that right side right up against the trees and the edge of the trail. So it's widened, it's changed. It's the way things go sometimes. You gotta get your rear wheel on top of the rock too. I come a little your way. And a little yeah, you, gotta go, you might have to come. Well, let's see, can you get through there? So what's happening is you need a little more traction right there. Yeah. Hey Chase, so tell us about your Explorer here. Uh, it's a 1998. Uh, it's got about 200,000 miles on it. Uh, it's a five-speed manual. Um, it's uh, pretty much just a budget build. I uh, got less than five grand in it total. Picked it up for 1,200 bucks. Um, built a little platform back here for us to sleep on when we go camping. Oh wow! All look our, at that. Uh, storage is underneath. We just have our blankets and dog bed for Maggie, and put some stuff up here when we're sleeping at night. Um, 33 inch tires on it, 15-inch uh, rims, open differentials. So um, how did you get 33s on, a, on an Explorer? Uh, well, I'll show you. A lot of cutting here and a lot of hammering. Precision instrument there, Chase. Oh, yeah. Um, you can still <laughs> see where the tire does rub a little bit, but I'm trying to keep it as cheap as possible, but still functional. So unless I truly have an issue, then it's not anything I'm going to change right now. So, so five grand. So you did the wheels, the tires. Wheels, tires, um, all new suspension. Essentially, I have new shocks on all four corners that have a little bit more travel than stock. Uh, no sway bars to kind of help with articulation since it's a IFS setup. Right. Um, and then just some cheap lights. Uh, that light bar I got for free. The one on the top was 50 bucks on. Uh, Craigslist and then the basket I've had for the past four or five cars I just kind of toss it onto the next build um, and then a spare tire. Your mirror here, Chase. We lost that on uh, Barbour Forks Trail. Okay. So uh, we uh, were a little bit, it gets pretty tight, kind of narrows down and I slid a little bit off to the right hand side and an aspen took that from me. So I think a little duct tape and it'll be back. There you go. Nice. Nice. Easy peasy. Oh, it fell off. You got it. The, that's where a piece of trim fell off. That's a gatekeeper. And you can tell it took a little bit of getting over that. But uh, Land Rover did really well. Thanks. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Side by sides. Are just super light with a lot of articulation and travel. There, there's really nothing better. That's the obstacle that keeps the outbacks out. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't say that. Oh my God, the Subaru fans are gonna go nuts. First bit of trail damage done, but that's okay. That's why we bought this bad boy. It's a mountain goat. So our temperature is at 198. We're right where it should be. We prefer it to be a little cooler. Oh. But what are you gonna do? 197. Now there you go. It's funny, off-roading is always a compromise. You know, when you have a dirt bike, you kind of talk about how off-road worthy it is. It's a 75% dirt and 25% road. And you kind of got the same issue with these trucks. So, you know, this is probably, let's call it 60% road and 40% dirt. But when you lift it like this, it changes that equation to maybe the other way. 60% dirt, 40% road. But then when you try to go overland and you put the tent on the roof, you put all this weight up high, which makes it not ideal because you don't really want, want to be able to roll it by raising the center of gravity. So that's why I'm just taking it nice and easy, picking my line very carefully, 
and letting the truck do all of the work. Okay, slow. Slow. Okay, now find a driver. Okay, hard driver, hard driver. That's the way. So Tommy, why is it called Red Cone? Well, because um, the top of the pass, there's these red rocks and sediments. Yeah, it's a big red cone. Yeah, it looks like actually, um, according to Jimmy, it looks like the, uh, the face of Mars. It's kind of an uh, unearthly experience, I guess. As we climbed higher up the trail, the ruts and ravines became bigger and more severe, really pushing the limits of our 2004 Land Rover. All right, you're gonna hit a rock now, hard. You're gonna go over it, nice. You can see here that the Land Rover relies heavily on traction control to distribute the power where it needs to go, when it needs to go there. The system is really working and you can even hear the little pump Coming. buzzing. You got it. You got it, nice! <laughs> nice work, Tommy. After pushing and pushing the throttle, the Land Rover finally worked its way up the hill, but Chase in the 98 Explorer was in trouble. With open diffs front and rear, there was no way to distribute power left and right, and he just kept spinning and spinning. The only way to get up this for Chase was momentum, but the issue was, this obstacle followed another difficult obstacle that also required momentum. Chase was in big trouble. You know, we could just pull you up. That too. I've got some straps. Yeah. That would be easy. You want to just pull them up, Tommy? Before you destroy the thing? <laughs> let's just Let's just pull you up. It'll, yeah, we'll grab some straps. It'll just be easier. What do you think? This uh, this bumper is all steel. But... Can you go over and through the cross member? Yeah, we might be able to go just, just right through there. And yeah. then come around, yeah? Yeah. That one around, whatever yeah. you want to put it on. Oh, we've been greatly outstrapped here, Dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, look yeah, at that I got thing. I've got more too. It's just this is my dynamic one. The Enterprise needs to be towed out of here. So what's the strategy here? Uh, well, we make sure we can get uh, a strap around the frame or cross. We're going to use a cross member, not the best, but dynamic strap. So yeah. it's not going to shock load it. This is going to stretch. Um, so we're just going to give a little bit of uh, pressure to get him through the flexi spot here. This will be more of a kinetic pull, right? Yes, absolutely. It. Uh, Strap has give to it. I'm ready. The rescue rig is now officially the rescue rig and not the need to be rescued rig. <laughs> Thank you, Roman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Air locker like in 90. Yeah. What do you expect? I'm humbled because. Jimmy seems to have a lot more gear in the back of his truck and a lot better storage situation than we do. It's a work in progress, we'll get this. I like the cargo net he's got. Jimmy, I have to say, I think you have probably my dream truck here because uh -oh. this is just such a cool little rig. Tell me about your truck here. So it's a 1994 yep. uh, D1, uh, five speed. So <laughs> everyone's all uh, excited over that sort of stuff. Uh, it's a two owner, so the original owner was from Colorado, uh, still living here as far as I know. 
Uh, I bought it uh, 12 years ago. Uh, came out here to find a house and move out and saw it on Craigslist. Wow. Um, probably paid a good price back then that people would have thought, my gosh, he's crazy for paying that much. It has been the best off-road vehicle. I've been wheeling for 20, 20 plus years. Best vehicle I have ever owned, I wow. have to say. So what makes it so good? Like, what, what's, uh, what's the recipe here? Uh, so the recipe on this one is simply just a three-inch lift. Um, it does have ARB lockers front and rear, so and skid plates on every spot you can possibly put it. So if you really want to do something tough, and, and of course the uh, 255-85 uh, tires, which are right around a little over 33 inch, uh, and it's just a good magical combination for getting through a lot of stuff short of, of you know buggy stuff and things like that. I mean, there's obviously limitations, but um, you're going to be able to do 80 to 90 percent of the trails in Colorado. Yeah. How many miles do you have on it? Uh, I just rolled 123,000. So I noticed in the front here you've got a an aftermarket bumper, right? Is that A or B? That's or? an A or B. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, on it when I bought it, um, I personally wouldn't recommend it for the fact that if we actually go around yeah, to the other side, here. but you're going to see a lot of bumps on it. So I'm not afraid to get close or get up against some stuff. And it, A or Bs are great, but they're notorious for flexing and giving mm. and if you make mistakes like I've made over the couple of years as you can see um, it will tweak it so that bumper has been pushed into the fender it's buckled so you can the see fender. yeah right here yeah it's bu buckled the fender and all that uh, I haven't bothered to pull it out and try to straighten it out or anything it's obviously I wheel it so Jimmy this is so funny you can see where like the cutout would be for a sunroof yeah so so uh, if folks who know Land Rovers really well will look at this and go why does it have a leather interior because this model without sunroofs is you know is a base model if you will and came with cloth interior. The oh. original owner wanted this, no sunroof, five speed manual. He wanted leather. So the Denver dealership said, no problem, buy it, we'll swap it out before you leave the lot. So wow. it got swapped to leather before it ever left the lot, and it's had it ever since. So, um, and it's just within the last year and a half, I've got the dreaded headliner sagging. So yeah, at some point I'll get around the dealing with that. That's funny. So, so from here, we're yeah. stopping and it's taking in the views, and you can see the trail heading up to the first peak up here. Um, the trail gets a little um, soft, loose, gravelly. Uh, it's an incline, um, and probably the worst spot is where you see the two white rocks there amongst the bushes. Yeah, the Jeep um, just went through. Yep, just right through there. It's, it, it gets a little slippery. You just want to make sure you're maintaining enough momentum that you don't want your vehicle to come to a stop because it will kind of start digging down. Um, shouldn't be too bad. You should be able to see all the wheel or something. There's a little wiggle. You get yourself moving again. Um, but it, it, it's a little steeper than it looks from here. This, this truck is doing exactly what Land Rovers are notorious for, which is wafting you across wait, difficult wait. Notorious terrain. would be breaking down. No, Notorious. Known for. Notorious okay. is bad. Well, known for yeah. is wafting you across this open, rocky terrain in complete yeah. comfort, because, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly comfortable here. Just, uh, you know, just sinking down into these leather seats, holding on to this leather steering wheel. We've got um, automatic climate control, heated seats, power everything. Yeah, no descent control. I'm feeling a little guilty getting the inside of this thing so dusty because it's such a nice place to be. <laughs> Alright Tommy, that's the top, that's where we're going. Way up there. Way up there. And then a really steep descent. say a stock Land Cruiser would have no problem with that except for those two really hard parts where you need probably a two-inch lift. Yeah, but I think even a stock Land Rover would have a hard time with those parts, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, um, capability-wise, it's it's pretty neck and neck, in my opinion, between Land Rover and, and um, Toyota, at least back in, in this era, 2004. Going up is not the hard part. It's actually coming down 30% grade makes this so challenging. A little scary up here, Tommy. Uh, pretty darn high. Yeah, yeah, and the crazy thing is it's like drops everywhere. Yeah, there's not one drop, it's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere it drops, yeah. Um, I can see right here. Yeah? What happened? Put a nice gash in a rock rail. Oh, really? Huge gash. Well, that's what they're for. There's 
trail leads down and right down in that saddle, you're gonna see, well, these switchbacks come up at the top. We're gonna come down and meet. That's considered Webster Pass. Yep. So that's Handcart Gulch, which will take you out to where we uh, first started at Starter Red Cone. And then that will go down into Montezuma. That dumps you into Montezuma. That's a nice, easy road. You see cars and yeah. everything else show up for that one. It's a pretty drive-in, pretty spot to hang out at the bottom. Lots of little little ponds. There's actually a water crossing that way, too. Yeah. So let's go look how steep this is gonna get. You know, it's pretty steep. 30 degrees, they say. But, uh, not that bad. Once upon a time, it used to be up here, you'd have Jeeps and Land Rovers and maybe pickup trucks. And now, of course, it's all razors. But that's okay, because we've just started a brand new YouTube channel called TFL Off-Road, where we're actually reviewing side-by-sides and ATVs. So be sure to check that out by clicking on the link below. And be sure to stay tuned, because we're about to head down. And it's a little steep, but I think we'll be okay. What do you think, Tommy? Oh, yeah. Ooh, first gear in low range is not slow enough. Hill descent is really trying, but it's way too fast. Oh, brakes are full on right now. Oh, we're still sliding. Trying to walk down. This is how steep it is. I can barely walk down to get to my truck. Yeah, that's pretty steep. <laughs> pretty steep. The TFL Rescue Rig made it down the mountain despite a somewhat mushy brake pedal and tire suspension. We had a great day on the trail and are absolutely in awe of this old Landy's capabilities. As always, this is Tommy and Roman with the Fastlane Off-Road. Stay tuned to TFLoffroad.com for the latest and greatest in everything off-road.